two teams. All right, well, we'll take a look what you guys think in this matchup. Will it be the space? Oh, that's pretty okay. close. That's pretty close. Yeah. Definitely one of the closer votes we've ever had, which uh, I think is pretty good. I mean, these two teams definitely are pretty uh, neck and neck, much the way that first match was as well. I have to say, Reciprocity still have a bit to prove themselves. S sure, Space Station lost their game from last week. Um, you know, they played against EG. It was a 7-3 on Villa. Yeah. Fine. Uh, you know, still evil geniuses. But Reciprocity, this is a new lineup. They've shaken things up in terms of the way that they're set up, setting up our, their players. Goddess used to play the more uh, support slash flex role. Now it's more on Shark, uh, or Mark the Shark. I just call him Shark. Just call him Shark. He's a shark. He's a shark in a fish tank. That's what he usually is. Well, so. this is an appropriate uh, level then with an aquarium and everything. Indeed. Indeed. There you go. It's, uh, we'll see how this one works. As you pointed out um, a couple minutes ago, it's always interesting mm -hmm. to compare and contrast between two games with four different teams on the same map just to see especially, how they're going to play. Especially if they're relatively even skill level. Ha ha! So, Jackal what do Reciprocity board. like to do? What does Fox like to play? Jackal, which is very odd. I wish his the operator's a, name was Fox. Actually had a lot of uh, retro even playing Jackal last time as well, so. Hmm. It's a pretty good op. There well. you go, Reciprocity will ban out the glass. Not really surprising as uh, he wasn't banned in our previous matchup. Uh, neither was the well. What, the Blackbeard was not the class, but wasn't used at all. The Echo will be removed well, by that's, Reciprocity. That's pretty much a target ban at that point. There you go. Which leaves the Maestro in play. Possibly the Mira or the Valkyrie ban in this matchup. Uh, but Space Station is starting on defense, so they might not want to ban the Valkyrie. Oh. That makes sense. I, I figured that's what they were going to go with, okay. just because they want to keep that Maestro option for sure. Oh, of course they're not going to ban the Maestro. Yeah. But you know, it was either Mira or the Valkyrie, and it seems like Space Station are willing to be fairly flexible on the defense with that Mira. Yeah, I mean, it, it makes more sense because that is that tends to be more the linchpin of the defenses on this map than extra yeah. cameras. Especially if you're starting off, um, if you're starting off in the defense, you want to maximize your profits, right? Especially, I mean, you are getting some cameras in the case of Maestro also gets two, so it's only one less camera than Valkyrie. They just deployed a little bit differently and work a little bit differently. Plus, his can see through smoke. So there's that, but they are going to bring a Mute. So they're going to start on Hookah, just like we saw last match. But the difference is you were pointing out Mute being used a lot to deny things. Sky's actually, he's been doing a lot of six picking off of IQ. But interestingly, it's to an operator Fox has been playing a lot of, which is Sledge. Something he's uh, played a lot of for quite a while. So it's just interesting to see the role change-ups happen. And they're always going to be strat and map dependent. So no one is really like sealed to one. But Redeemer, pretty confidently going to be playing a lot of Maestro and or Echo most of the time. So it is interesting to see the attack kind of shake things up a little bit. Laxing, actually, who had been playing a lot of Thatcher, for example, if Thatcher's not needed on the map, it's interesting to see what his choice is going to be. Because as you were just talking about some of the role changes that kind of came into this team, shaking up a little bit how they play it, changing mm -hmm. who's the IGL. Now they don't necessarily have the same kinds of support players. Some people were support like, went to other. I like goals. that evil. Like That's always a fun one. The, uh, on the uh, 90, as it's referred to, much like uh, Villa. That's a, always, a, always a good one, whether it be on and the ground I, or on the wall. And I like the second one as well here because it allows you to look all the way down. There you go. You see here, you can rotate it in to fight you know, one side or the other. You can see through the window. You can see through the aquarium. But you also have a bulletproof camera that is set right on the side here. On, uh, well, right in front of Thinking Nate, I guess. If you can turn it around. Uh, whatever. You saw it. It's on the other side. It's in billiards. Maximum visibility for smoke plants because, as you saw last time, smoke plants on the A bomb are pretty much... I mean, if you're not doing those, I'm not sure what's happening at this point. Just seems like it always seems to happen. All right, well, only one set of smokes, though, in play here for Reciprocity. So we'll only have uh, Mark playing that as the Capital. Of course, the biggest thing with the Capital, not only can you clear ADSs, which are not available here, Space Station are not bringing the uh, Jaeger, but you obviously can direct the smoke and just know exactly where it's going to hit. That's always an advantage that the Capital will bring, as well as one of the best rifles when it comes to tap fire. So you can definitely hit longer range shots with the uh, Para 308. It's, uh, it's definitely a good resurgence of the operator. Sounds like he took out a drone with the Evil Eye there for a second. Just uh, just getting off it just in time. Oh, they had naded it out as well. But at the cost of Fox's life, pushing in there. Very uh, difficult there as Chala was right around the corner waiting for Fox to peek in. Redeemer will take a bit of damage, but Bosco can definitely turn around and heal him back up to 100% health. A uh, bit of a thing that people were thinking about. It's like, hey, well, now Second there's floor. Bosco on Space Station. He's probably going to fill the smoke roll. Well, no, Thinking Nate is actually a pretty good smoke. 
whichever team you'd like to, to play on. And you see the bulletproof camera on the side there was taken out by Retro, so no more breaching charges. And even the dock playing in from below, so Bosco can rotate back on the site. Retro is just watching from the luggage for any potential rotations from the defense playing downstairs in the box. Yeah, and speaking of the defense downstairs, the important thing is now you've got Bosco keeping Rampy alive to C4 for a plant, because the plant is always going to come on that one spot for the most part. So even if smoke goes down, you know can be planted, but Mark, take it down Bosco, that's going to open up things for on against Rampy if he's not careful. The retro are getting shot from, I actually don't know where. Uh, I don't know where it was going to shot from, possibly from below. Yeah, there we go. So Rampy will go back upstairs through the uh, blue bar and through the blue stairs. Of course, Chala is holding off on the mute. Still 32 seconds left. Thinking Nade will get taken down by Skies. He just runs into the site and now has control, trying to play behind the reinforced wall. But unfortunately, Mark will get dropped on the floor alongside the Diffuser. 1v1 trade is advantage manpower for reciprocity. Look at the mute here. Chala just watching in. They'll find one more. Retro will get taken out. No Nitro Cell available, but all the information that they'd like to gather here, all for Space Station. Chala holding off. The Fuser should get set any second now, and Laxing will find the shot. Chala's down on the floor and taken out. Rampy will go back up, but the Barbed Wire playing against him in this situation will give out his position. He'll find one kill. Can he find the second? The Fuser's still not set. We're 0-0. Zero, zero. He's right there, and Rampy will find it. Headshot to take down Skies. Space Station Gaming World are blasting off again. It is unfortunate that when Mark pushed in there, he just was not better prepared to deal with that hole. Ended up getting shot from it, and it didn't seem like Skies necessarily was able to trade that. Might have been a lack of communication there, as I would have expected him to whip around and take that shot. Instead, he progressed into the site, which wasn't the worst idea, because he was able to secure it, get in there, and start getting set up for the plant. But their inability to defend against Rampy rotating up did not work out. Wonderfully done there by Rampy, I have to say. The information that the Pulse was able to give uh, was instrumental, but, you know, the fact that he was able to go up fight laxing for that position, in the meantime, Skies was supposed to drop the plant. However, Attackers need to locate and it wasn't really bomb. timed correctly, unfortunately, there for reciprocity, as I don't want to say the shadow's creeping up, but back in the day, it was always that we're not sure when to plant kind of thing with, with C9. I don't really want to see that creeping up on them again. It's definitely a possibility. Had Skies planted on the other side of that reinforced wall, there's a good chance he might have been able to get it down first before Rampy was able to get around. Because you saw just barely kind of snaked that shot around inside Hookah. So it was just due to uh, timing being part of it. See, double mirror windows being set up. Makes sense. Right? Yeah. It is a pretty standard setup there with the mirror. Um, one reinforced wall, the second one that you should be able to vault over. I'm not sure if they're going to destroy the top side. I would imagine, otherwise, why put it on a soft wall, right? It, it, it very much does make sense. So one is obviously to contest any pushes from the window and from the bathroom, and one is to hold off anybody that pushes in from the, the, from the VIP into the penthouse or from the main hallway. In this case, there are no hard breachers being played by reciprocity, which you know what? This is coastline. It's completely fine, guys. You can play with no uh, hard breachers, and coastline is the definition of a map where you don't really need to run any of them, as we said in our previous matchup. Interesting to contrast between the two matches we've had is that the start from Reciprocity in the previous round, where they try to take control of the VIP in the hallway, was very well done, just like their, their comrades in the previous game, but... Here, Fox is going to face a bit of a obstacle. Is Rampy yeah. just playing that pulse wonderfully? Interesting part is, of course, Rampy took a shot there, gave away his position, but then now he can see the real-time position of Fox much better than Fox can see where he's at now. So Starting definitely shot. a bit of a contest between the two, so he's going to send in another drone. Of course, might actually catch Rampy off guard because Rampy might be looking through the heartbeat sensor, which will not show him the drone. Oh. So it depends on the timing here. does manage to sneak it into the bushes just the time you see two live pings coming out here. Might have had someone else even get on the drone for him. But the sneak around from the other side is just, it's all on Fox to just kind of keep his head on a swivel here. Managed to try and clear out this bottom floor because Rampy, you saw what a problem he was staying alive towards the end of the round last time. Attackers have yeah, well, they already heard the damage done to the Twitch of Fox. This of course, there's the audio cue, and Rampy should be able to scan around, and gets just a bit closer to the wall here. We'll be able to scan it, as Grizzly Scanner has a lighter range than it used to ages ago. And just, there we go, he'll find her. And knows she's behind the blue bar. So, all they gotta do is just keep a tab on Fox, and 
They don't really have to push him. Chong in the meantime is taking a bit of damage on the mirror, but nothing really too concerning. They'll fire through as Retro will find one. I'm thinking Nate and Fox will get another on Bosco. Information was not relayed in. Beautiful. Oh no, the angle not tight enough. Redeemer will get one on Skies as Chala is actually running the vector with no sights. Interesting choice. Yeah, I'm not too sure why, but Mark will get one kill, leaving Mira yeah, Chala on his own with one health. Uh, Definitely looking much better here for reciprocity. Yeah. You know, we always try to hype it over. It's like, can he do it? It's getting close. It's a 1v5. He'll have to ace and just no. Yeah, no, that was that was definitely going to end with a bit more of a whimper than a bang. Yeah. Unfortunately. More of an entero bang. Well, tomorrow. Actually, yes. He was looking fairly dapper yesterday, I have to say. Does he ever not? That's very true. Entero's a handsome man. He, he likes to uh, make sure that that stays that way. You know, it does have an effect on certain people, so it's understandable. Yeah. Well, tied up now, and they're going to try Penthouse again. Understandable, as, in my opinion, there's a lot of mistakes that were done by Space Station in that round, and it is all on them, the loss. Well, they also know what the approach is likely to be from reciprocity, is they're most likely to do a similar strategy for the most part, you know, with minor adaptations maybe in how do they enter or how they drone. But overall, this is uh, on Space Station then to just make some adjustments to some of the positions they play so they don't get caught off guard, and to then take advantage of the entry positions from Reciprocity. But it just means Reciprocity need to coordinate their entry better and make sure that they're able to get those pinches, don't lose the drones that are essential to that, and then be able to execute a little bit faster on those. So, for example, you saw how slow Fox was entering last time. Maybe need to be a little bit speedier in terms of getting an idea where people are at to be able to enter on that, or maybe that's going to be Retro's job. He's going to be playing the speedier attack operator. But either way, they are going to have to play off their information. Redeemer actually pulling out a shield here to be able to play inside. Uh, theater extended slightly into Penthouse to fight the window. Actually, I, I want to get a bit technical here. So you see there's a drone hole right next to that hatch, right? Now, that, yeah, you see that drone hole? There's actually a very good strategy to put right in front of it a maestro camera, either on on this side or on the other, in the hallway, mm -hmm. because it allows you to look through the hallway, but also can test anybody that's pushing through the window. And I Just tested, a little bit less visibility, though. It, indeed, but it makes it a lot more difficult for the attackers to actually destroy it. Now, when you put it inside of the penthouse, it's obviously much easier to destroy, but it's an angle you're not going to watch very distinctly. So you put it in the hallway, and from my own testing, and I, trust me, I, I spent like half an hour going through this with, with a couple people. And yeah, uh, that's a pretty strong angle. And unless you know that it's going to be there and have scouted it out specifically, it can play against you very long into the round. So I highly recommend you try it out yourself at home. This is one of the few things that I can tell you. You can try this at home. Yeah, because DIY it, project. It, it really is one of the technicalities of the Maestro. It's not just knowing how to fight and using your, your LMG, but also the positioning of your evil eyes. That is so Speaking instrumental. Which, you got to watch that one be destroyed live in front of you. So now there is only the drone hole one left. Yeah, it breaks my heart. Every time I'm, uh, an evil eye gets destroyed. Now, he might see it from the window rather than having to dro and destroy it from the drone hole if he has the right angle from the window, the but that's what Maestro is there to fight the against with the deployable shield. Exactly, and that's why it's such a difficult team. angle to deal with as the attacking side because you have to expose yourself a bit too much. Yeah, and that's, can be done. that's what they're going to have to deal with is they're going to have to push him back potentially from the Hall of Fame doorway mm -hmm. first to have the angle. Now, Retro actually going to go up to the bathroom hatch instead. Clear barbed wire, just do some setup for his team. It's interesting that he's not playing as much of an entry role on the Ashes, so much as a somewhat support role. We see him do a lot of that hanging on windows and things like that with Capital, for example, or Jackal on Consulate, which he did last time. So, it and is it's just no him. Retro is not running his trademark Blackbeard. Reload! Yeah, it is not banned this time. Mm -hmm. So, definitely something he could be running, but that is definitely going to push uh, off the shield there, and that oh. offers Retro the opportunity to just run in. So that is an Ash with the playable shield that, or I mean, with the diffuser that makes some sense, but. Chala able to counter it. Nicely done. That might have been somewhat Rampy's doing as well. He might have been able to catch him on a heartbeat sensor. It's called out. But no, it looks like he's sneaking around here looking again to fight Fox. Who will win this time? Fox will. There you go. Low, Low on health. health. But he's done the damage. That's all that they need. 40 seconds on the clock. And this is the problem. When you you think it's too safe, it probably is way too safe because yeah. there's somebody waiting for you. They want to beat you into that position. Skies through the smoke will find the kill. Chala's now taken out. Good play here against the Mira, who's not really having the best of days today. Diffuser has been planted as one canister or one uh, bolt will get expended. Laxing with one, Skies with the other is the doing. Duo is running fine. 
well-oiled machine. Bosco will go in for the fight, but Sky is ready. SMG 11 in hand, and will greet Bosco with a flurry of bullets. That is all that was required from Reciprocity. And yet again, Space Station failing to defend the penthouse that yet again is proving to be a bit of a thorn in every defense's side. And at some point, you kind of have to wonder, hey, there's four viable sites. Do you really need to keep playing penthouse? I mean, it only got played once last match, and it was Rogue, and they won it. Yeah. So it was it was definitely but it was it was their last pick. It was the last round they played on defense and it was the fourth site they played. So it is not a huge surprise. One thing I liked about that attack though, despite it failing with retro running in, they were trying to take advantage of an opportunity. Like you said, maybe it was a little bit too much of an opportunity, but the fact that he had a smoke left in his crossbow, hit the smoke when he did and jumped out the window, you saw them forced to look for the angle to try and fight him because when someone plants in the room there, you the expect them to still be in the room there. The fact that the smoke obscured the vision forced the Jaeger to have to peek wide. In doing so, offered Fox the opportunity to get in Hall of Fame position, to get a setup to where he could counter the Jaeger. Jaeger definitely looked a little surprised when he came around the corner only to find Fox smiling face. Or no, I'm sorry, it wasn't Fox, it was, um, I believe, Skies on the uh, sledge. So it was, but it was an opportunity that it was somewhat capitalized on because of the cap tail, hitting that smoke, having one in the crossbow, and jumping out the window, wisely doing so. So nicely done. And that is a point ahead now, coming out for reciprocity. Yeah, it's very true. You know, Skies has a very precious left. smile. Very precious. Very precious. precious. So you see Attackers the Maestro camera set up on the, the palm tree, which... Um, Interesting I, spot. Yeah. I mean, you can't destroy the palm tree, so it's definitely going to stay there until it's destroyed by any other direct intervention. And he's got one there down on the floor. He definitely likes to put ones down on the floor as opposed to the wall. If only Greenpeace was listening to you. I don't think they listen very often. I'm not going to start up a Greenpeace podcast anytime soon. Huh? Oh, that's very true. And right, well, Skies will repel up. And Attackers have located bombs. not sure what he's going to do here. Maybe watch from below. Set up for grenades actually through the through the whole drone hole here for five stairs. Follow it up a little bit here with his drone. Actually kind of peeking down mm. rather than dedicating the drone to it. It's a nice attempt to use a little bit of the fact that you can kind of see down it. And of course, you heard the maestro yelling in the back. Very distinct yell from Redeemer. I, I, I prefer Castle's yell. <laughs> just his scream. I like Sophia's yell, actually. She just swears, which is... From my experience with most people, very, very true. <laughs> so Fox will set up here for his shock drone and just throw it on in to go into the baggage area. And he sees that everything's clear, which gives him the cue. Time for me to go. That's the thing is it's all about knowing when it's that go time as an attacker, knowing which spots are clear. Because, of course, if you clear an area and then don't do anything about it, that information quickly expires, especially the more three-speed defenders there are to be able to make that rotate, or even two-speed, just because the gap is a little bit less now. Still gives you the opportunity to move around. But a lot of defenders defending each other to set up for these trades, but shots come down and Retro not landing them. Well, I love the fact that there's players still holding off upstairs in the VIP in Retro. We'll find the headshot. Chala is down, but quickly refract from Bosco again. VIP being held means that you, as an attacker, will have so much more work to do to actually try to get into the site. And you see, because of the way that things are destroyed here in the wall in the blue bar, it's nigh impossible for the attack to try and push in unless they can bring the Zofia or the Sledge to come in from already a very exposed position. Well, at the very least, they still a 4v4 in 50 seconds left. That is some time to do so, but and what I said about before, the three-speed attackers moving around Bosco, trying to stay as mobile as possible, and Rampy doing a good job actually slowing them down, finally not playing Pulse for once instead on the Legion. Attackers Fox, you see, rotating as well. But again, they are trying to get those positions, and Redeemer is stopping them dead in his tracks. Definitely is a uh, pattern uh, that is uh, starting to evolve when uh, in our previous matchups a few days ago, um, almost a week ago actually, whenever Redeemer was taken out, the round got a lot more difficult for Space Station. And here Rampy definitely putting up the uh, the work for the squad. Fox will get taken down, 10 seconds on the clock, 2v4. Advantage for Space Station as Laxing is quickly dispatched. Five and Skies is the last man alive to come in through the blue bar. Maestro Camera will give out his position and Rampy again going in for the finisher. Skies is down, and Space Station will tie it up 2-2. Two two. Unfortunately, 
Reciprocity is spending a lot of time upstairs and not even securing most of it. Like you mentioned with the VIP being a huge thorn on the side, the fact that they spent pretty much the whole round just trying to use the top floor to their advantage left them in such a compromised position once time ran out. The fact that they didn't even have that top floor control completely working against them. They really needed to be a bit faster and more coordinated on pinching in terms of whether or not they were able to actually secure parts of the map because once you secure areas there's only two staircases to worry about to rotate from so it's not actually that difficult to continue to hold the top floor once you get control of it they just were not able to secure that control quickly and that's pretty much what got them killed you saw the attempts from the sledge to try and do some work down through the holes had he got some of those kills that might have made it a lot more possible to get in and go for the plant when time was down like that but his inability to get those kills as well absolutely cost them so the top floor control they did have didn't turn into enough kills. And then, of course, the good kills from Rampy and Maestro as well. Just completely working against them. But we'll see how things go now again. This time, as they attack onto Hookah for the second time. Now, last time, SSG won this site as well. So, so far, they've won just Hookah and Bar, which are, of course, above and below each other. So this seems to be a good side of the map for them in particular. Penthouse, on the other hand, not so great, but we have not seen them go to Kitchen just yet. So it'll be interesting to see if they end up going that way as uh, they still have at least uh, one more round left to go on their defensive side. Attackers have recovered them. Let's see if they can play that. Actually, Rampy back on the pulse again. Not a surprise there. Yeah, it was something that, that even even the previous round, yeah, sure, he played the Legion. He still did a lot of damage with it, so I don't really think it's going to affect Rampy too much. Of course, no. the, the decision here is made just because you want to have the Pulse playing from below. Um, you know, it's very possible they'll have also the Mute supporting him. And it's case the Jaeger possibly as well, just so they can play with C4s from downstairs and have the Jaeger as flank support. And he's playing a pretty typical Jaeger role, which is roaming kind of that security room and lobby area. You see that a lot from Jaegers. It just has that, that high mobility to be able to kind of move around in that general area and control it. Is he can move between security and the desk, Attackers and you can recover the diffuser. rotate over the kitchen or courtyard as needed. So you want someone with that mobility down there in that spot, as well as someone that can then take quick oh, gunfights. Makes it very hard to contest that general area, and then you can control kind of a whole elbow of the map. Elbow of the map. I always try to make the metaphors for coastline interesting. <laughs> the bee's knees. All right. Things definitely slowing down here a bit as Retro took a bunch of damage, so that seems to have kind of slowed them down. And I, I do like the way, again, that Bosco and Rampy are defending each other, as you mentioned before. Their ability to do so, it is always really effective to have a pulse along with the teammate, especially someone like Jaeger, because then the pulse can sit in his heartbeat sensor, call it for the Jaeger, the Jaeger can defend for the pulse. Works out very well, but not for thinking nade. Who is finished off by Lexi. Yeah, not a great, not a great uh, position to be in here. If your space station is forced to lose the smoke, an operator that only gains in value as the round continues, you always have to repeat. Laxing will find that kill on the purple tarp, which is still a multiple position. We saw that uh, when we followed Hungary on the EU side. We saw it last match as well. Yeah, so you get to see how that rotation happens, a very powerful thing. Laxing will find another one. There you go. Redeemer will get taken down. Oh, that means SSP lose, right? Yeah. No, there oh. you go. Shala right in the face. Capital crossbow bolt will get fired right in front of him. Mark the shark, making it work. Last man alive suddenly is Bosco, and he wishes he was in security right now. As the diffuser yeah. will get planted, looking like reciprocity wanting to go for the finisher. Bosco still not down, but it's only for a second. Skies will clean him up. It looks like uh, this uh, Skies laxing combo here is uh, definitely not overrated. It was clearly designed to punish any opponent. They're definitely finding their groove. And now last week was definitely their, their very first match to kind of figure out yeah. whether or not the new changeups they were doing working. Like how and do then, we run it? You know, yeah. how are we gonna set it up? And they're making minor adjustments. They're definitely having Fox play a little bit of a different role and Skies play a little bit different role as well because he tended to be more of a, of a fast entry on Buck was what we saw, for example, on Consulate. Very aggressive in the way he would take some of the early map control, which worked out fairly well. But then it seemed like uh, the approach from Fox was always a little bit slow on that sledge, which he still played well, but it was it was just not uh, the speed that he, he was able to take advantage of where he's playing a bit more Twitch now, for example, although he was making the Monty there for a second, but he's going to go back to the usual. And this uh, lineup seemed to work fairly well, although this round could definitely the go the way of uh, SSG, which would then tie things up again, which is something we finally saw 
last match and could definitely do the same here. Now, this is it's, it's interesting because this is a map that used to be very attacker favorite. Yeah. And that was the reason the Lion was still in the, in the, available as a choice or a ban. Yeah, and, and that's the thing. Some people might say, yeah, but he was banned all the Bomb time. Well, that's the attacker. thing. Yeah, it took away his spot. Exactly. Exactly. No, I mean, I wouldn't say this. the... the uh, the way that the uh, attacker bands have been Five used uh, are completely at fault for that. This game also seems to have shifted a bit towards the attacker defender side in general bomb. lately. And that's due to a variety of factors. Some of those just small changes that happen between seasons, but also some of those just Position play device. style in general and the way people are playing certain sites and the way people are Position learning device. how to use them differently depending on their target bands that they now have the flexibility to do. One point that will hark back to discussion we had with Nyx actually in the interview is the Doka Bee. You know, when, when you're struggling to find uh, your opponents and clear them out if they're having their own play, um, you have two choices. You either clear the roamers first and then attack the site or risk it and then go for the site anyways without having to spend too much manpower on uh, the roam clear. It's interesting how Jackal and Dokubi have kind of become these so this sort of semi-interchangeable roam clear smoke yeah. operator. They, they, they have a lot of similarity, but also a lot of differences. Attackers Side grades. Yeah, That's, it has definitely made it interesting. In my opinion, that is the perfect level of game design. When you have operators that on the surface do the similar thing, but once you actually get down to the gameplay, they do it in different ways. There's ways that are so different that they end up being their own special case. And that's yeah. something that I love about the dynamic. Although, so far we have yet to see uh, Reciprocity go with either of them. They uh, seem to be comfortable enough on their executes. Of course, I mean, they the have Jackal is of banned. What's that? Of course, the Jackal is banned. Yeah, no, that will definitely you know, stop one of those from being a choice. Their they still have a choice of the other, as you mentioned. But who knows, they might have a player that feels super comfortable with that on this uh, particular map, or might not feel that they need it. We are getting close to this, and this, of course, is Kitchen, where I said they hadn't gone yet, and we still have a chance to go, and they definitely are doing so, despite the fact they could play Hookah again. Fox will try to peek in here from the front door of the kitchen. Won't find anything just yet, as, you know, it, it is very uh, perplexing now that the Twitch suddenly has this huge spike in her pick rate, where in the last season it wasn't really the case. Oh, one kill for Retro and instantly refragged here by the Jaeger. At least the bandit will go down or one of the few bands we've seen tonight. I'm not sure, maybe it probably is our first bandit, uh, bandit the whole night. Um, there's a lot of mute in play, that's for sure. Yeah. Chal on the opposite end, ready for the C4. Cannot connect as he's downed by the Capital of Mark. Going for the Diffuser plant and look at the perfect play that's there with the asphyxiating bolts, unfortunately a bit too close. A thinking Nade will find it. 3v3, boss goes down, Redeemer's out, and Thinking Nade, last man alive. Fox is still low on health, but it's all he needs to get that plant down. They have to now play with the softball on the side. One remote gas canister left. Should be enough to dispatch Fox, but Thinking Nade is just checking every single position. He now puts himself in the back, and the Skies is ready for him. Again, the Skies, beautiful bit of play. Seems like whenever you don't put Skies on IQ to Destroy drones. Hey, he does a pretty darn good job. There you go. Also, like I said before, he was playing more of an aggressive entry, I think, a lot of the time last week. And we've seen him kind of tone it down this time. He's mm -hmm. kind of working more together with Fox and Laxie to get some of that map control early rather than trying to push more aggressively in towards site, which, you know, is something that I, I don't think was terrible against uh, Accelerate. They were able to kind of get away with to an extent, but he often was the first to die. In this case, we're often seeing him getting the finishing kill, which, of course, means he's living till li the end of the round to be able to accomplish that. And that, that seems to be helpful. Stay alive. Team. Yeah, absolutely. So they are going to take that last bomb site and actually make it their first bomb site with Kitchen here. But Mark actually going to tease the pulse. He's not actually going to stick on. So mm. just kind of make them scared. The nice thing about faking that pulse bomb. is if they don't catch on to the fact that he's missing, they're going to feel like they have to clear a lot more of the map necessarily. Although that is a bit more effective if you are playing on the top floor and they feel like they have to, you know, absolutely control the floor below you, or at least try and control it. In this case, well, it's going to be the floor above, so maybe not as much of a threat as they'd like. And we are going to see that castle again. We did see that last time for Bar, I believe it was, and they used that a little bit to control some of the bar side and some of the kitchen side. Could see a similar dynamic with castle being used here just for the, the other site. Now, of course, the mirror will get picked up again, so the signal is very regular setups. Now, the interesting part is that reciprocity or not bringing the Maestro, yep. which is definitely a big deal for a space station. Now, one thing I would like to check, there you go, thank you very much. Laxing is not running the bulletproof camera, and I wonder if Retro is uh, bringing impacts. He is. 
pretty standard mm -hmm. most of the time for castles. Just because like you, you really want his ability to both close off doors and open new ones, right? And he, oh, when, when he closes a door, he opens a window, as they say. And you know what they do, they work both ways. <sighs> oh, there you go. You always, you always have to find a way to put that in a conversation. This is important. That's, I, I'm, I'm going to open a fortune cookie one day, 100%. and it's going to say that. Dude, I'll, I'll buy a t-shirt where it just says, oh, those holes work like both it. ways. They just signed Devin Becker. You gotta, you gotta have the front say, holes work, and then the both back buttons. Yeah. Absolutely. We're make, we're gonna make so much dough. Right. <laughs> that's that's my retirement plan. Is <laughs> that T-shirt? <laughs> we're just building up to it right now. It's the long con. Well, it's it's like a couple years away, anyways. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> speaking of a couple years away, still two minutes left for them to get this approach in. We're dealing with the first Ying we've seen all day. We actually haven't seen a ton of Ying play this season so far, but it is still a very strong operator. Just seems that uh, teams haven't found it as vital as, say, Capital, for example, in terms of trying to get a plant down. But hey, if you got a strategy that calls for an aggressive push in a certain spot, or hey, I even if you just like to use it for roam clear, it's still oh. very effective. Nice Mirror window will get popped. Wonderfully done. And they'll lose one. I'm not sure if that was popped intentionally by reciprocity, so they can fight from the opposite end, but it would make sense that they would do such a thing. Candle will get popped in the back as skies will be completely blinded and oppressed. And then shot to bits by Redeemer. Of course, that is the Don't big power of the Ying. One more candle to be thrown in as uh, all C4s will get thrown right into the attackers. Rampy will find the kill as Retro will get one of his own. It's now a 3v2 advantage for Space Station. Damage done to Chal in the back. But again, the Fuser's on the floor and it's Mark that'll have to retake. Two impact grenades left here for Retro, who tries to come in from the Cool Vibe stairs. So is there anybody in the hallway to clear him out? Should be. See Mark pushing up close to try to contest, but there we go. He'll win it out. That's Redeemer down on the floor. Rampy will get one, he'll get two. The Ash to clean things up as well, all the way from downtown in the Sunrise Bar. And Space Station will pick up first round here on attack. Something interesting I noticed is, is Ying is not used, being used in combination with smoke plants anymore. It seems to be in place of. It's a situation where it's like you can blind them with smoke or you can blind them with candelas. Either way, as long as they can't see you, you can get the plant down, right? Because obviously, if they can see you, they just shoot you. We saw that in the, you know, in a previous round. Very true. So, it, it seems to be an interesting case where because, you know, you're you're going for a different situation where you're potentially blinding them in a situation that's much worse than smoke because they can't just look around it. But it's also maybe a little less reliable than smoke because you can't control the angle of view the same way you can with smoke. So it's, like you said, a side grid. It's Defender a different way, different approach. And maybe something we'll see a bit more of this season in terms of uh, approaches or, or even situations where one of your potential smoke operators, like, say, Jackal, happens to be banned. In this case, well, it was... Uh, SSG doing that banning, so they already had the plan for not having to use the Jackal, but maybe the Ying was part of that. As we see Redeemer bringing it yet again, so that seems to be the case. Maybe they're just thinking Dokubi not necessarily something they want to deal with. But I, I feel like Dokubi compared to Jackal is a much uh, more difficult operator to use gun-wise, because the C70 and the ITA are both very very useful and yeah. strong guns, as opposed to dealing with, say, the, the CZ or uh, the, uh, the DMR. It can be a bit more difficult to get into some of those gunfights without a lot of practice in those. And I'm very intrigued by the Thatcher here, who's Attackers seen a bit of a rise in popularity as well. Uh, not so much in the matchup so far, but... Surprising, his laxing plays a lot of it normally, mm -hmm. but mostly been so this time. Very true. And it seems like, obviously, because of the map, etc., it all it all really uh, floods back to, okay, well, here's how we're going to play it. We're going to need more disruption. And, of course, in terms of, in terms of just disrupting your opponents and blinding them, Ying is kind of the ultimate... You know, the ultimate fighter. Yeah. Well, it definitely worked out for them last round. They hopefully will be a little bit more prepared for it this time, as they may have seen it during the uh, reveal phase. Be better prepared for it. They do, have, of course, have a Jaeger. So you got to imagine if you're a Jaeger a and you see that Ying, you want to put a bit more ADSs on site than you might uh, otherwise, because you really want to make sure that those candelas get caught as much as possible, if you can help it. Because if you just put one on site, it's very likely to be burned by, say, an Ash coming up and throwing some flashbangs into the room. Well, the drones will come in, they'll find what is very standard, you know, what you would find here for the defenders. They're all set in the back of the theater, and you'll need to have some sort of way to watch the flank, control the VIP, control the hallway, which are obviously big positions for you on the attacking side. Rampy setting up here to destroy the second mirror window that is set up on the left-hand side and will be successful in doing so 
as there was uh, no ADS, they were all clean, so nothing to catch. The breaching charge that was sent all down the hallway. It's interesting that Fox is playing so far on the other side of the map rather than coming back. And he's actually looking for a flank on people the on the DJ booth area here. Oh, too slow. No information to play off of. I really have to doubt that uh, that attack. Yeah, the heartbeat sensor wasn't going to be seeing it, but there go the Candelas. And they're all the way in the back. They'll find one. Chala will be the one to get that kill. Is there one still behind the mirror window? Nothing so far. There you go. No one in there. Laxon will get spotted by the big window, and Rampy will clean him up. Well done. And this sort of attack that we don't really see too much of as attackers get the old school move of hockey. What we're going to do is just destroy the reinforced wall and then enter the, the penthouse and plant from there. And it works. But still, you have to have some sort of flank watch because Laxing there could have ended it all. Yeah, absolutely. It was a, it was definitely a case of that, that flank and VIP made all the difference in terms of uh, stopping the push around on the planter. And I got to say, the Candelas again did their job for the most part. So far, it seems that penthouse has been a death trap for both of these teams, but smartly... We're going to see Reciprocity go off of it, whereas we saw SSG play it twice Defender in a row and lose it twice in a row. By so, smart of Reciprocity to try and get away from that. Rampy, 12 kills now. He's not normally someone that right. pegs a top fragger, but he definitely does his job very well. But this Attackers match, he is bomb. definitely going off, whether it be as uh, the Ash or as the Pulse, whatever he, whatever he ends up playing, or even the, the Legion previously. It's definitely been a good day for him. So, uh... Kudos to him for really stepping up in terms of uh, making sure that the team is coming together. So far, seems to be working. We'll see, though, how this kitchen attack works. As last time, they also won this bomb site, so it is, again, surprising the rest of the don't go somewhere else. I guess this must have been their two primary sites, was both penthouse and kitchen, neither of them having worked. They must not be as comfortable in their third bomb site to not be switching to it already. Nice view. Gotta love the view. <laughs> I don't think I don't think you, they teach you that in basic 101 when you're when you're training. Like, hey, you know, you see, you gotta hold your weapon just like that. Yeah, you don't put that. the butt of the rifle in front of your face, generally. Sure. It doesn't it doesn't work as an iron sight. <laughs> oh, man. I don't have extensive military training to say that. Yeah. Well, they are going to have to waste uh, valuable resources here to get the uh, Castle Barricade open. That is uh, Habana coming out. It's something you mentioned uh, you weren't seeing any of previously. Finally coming out here to give them some flexibility if they were to have to attack Penthouse again, which is, I mean, that makes sense because we saw them play it twice. It was a good possibility that we could see Reciprocity try it a second time. They were going to be better prepared for that. I mean, this attack even makes sense for that because you'd be set up to open up that wall. In this case... You know, it was it is what they did last round. Rampy adding more kills. Lucky number thirteen. There you go. Fox is taken out, and uh, no more running here. Laxing actually just boosting himself up, going on a, a heavy roam to keep bottom floor control. It doesn't look like anyone from SSG really trying to contest that right now. So unfortunately, that boost is eventually going to wear off. It's pretty much everyone in SSG just focused on taking the top floor at the moment. And they just want above the bomb site, which will makes a lot of sense. And not really a whole lot contesting going on for them from Retro at the moment, as he's a little cautious about doing so. And the Candela is making him more so. Oh, a nice shot from Rampy again. 14 kills in total. Well, take down Retro, the castle, and the Jaeger, and another one. Rampy with a 3K of the round. Skies instantly flicked to the head. Burke was low on health here, but my god, Rampy's just looking for more. Feed the machine! Laxing, holding the desk area, making sure nobody can peek in through into the lobby. But little does he know, Rampy's on the hunt, and he should be able to find him. That's that pretty is, predictable. Yeah, he's just going to try to sneak past the barbed wire, just because if he goes through it, it will spot. There you go. He has the information. He has Bosco as well in front of him to gain info. Unfortunately, the drone will get taken out. And what will the decision from Rampy be? Will he open up that uh, that hatch and try to rush through? Well, see, the Candelas from the Ying perfectly played here. Chala will find the kill. This is, of course, the second way of using that uh, Candela. Redeemer will get shot down, but not before he does all the work necessary. Diffuser is already set on the floor by the kitchen. And Laxon will have to retake this. This Rampy upstairs looking for another kill. He's going to find him. There you go. 
4K for Rampy. Beautiful bit of play here from him and the entire squad. That's 16 in total. He's having an, a very on night. And in this case, he's playing a role that is mostly about getting those kills. So, it is how do you uh, deal with someone like that that's on fire all the time? This is a similar question. Like, I was asking this a couple nights ago, and even today, when we were watching some of the EU games, how do you deal with players like Joystick, like Rampy right now, who's on fire? And yeah, or like Nyx would, in some way. Yeah. You, you really have to do something that makes them frustrated so that they just kind of lose that groove because confidence is a huge part of playing that role, especially when you're playing in Ash. If you can do anything that shakes that confidence, that gives you a huge edge in those fights because there's that, that brief hesitation that you start to get in your shots. What That brief hesitation opens up a huge window for the defenders that are uh, on top of their game. Defenders there's definitely something to watch out for, and we'll see if Reciprocity are able to learn from their mistakes and promptly shut down Space Station. Of course, their spearhead of Rampy. Definitely, there you go, 16 kills. Wow. Two assists and four deaths on the board. Almost double the highest other, which is uh, Skies at nine. So looking good. They are going again with the Habana and the Ying. It was nice to see the fuse style uh, candela from above because that was an, a, a great use of that above ground control in a way that didn't involve Sledge or Buck. Not really, really died on the drop, but. Yeah, it really is not something you're expecting as a defender anyways. Yeah. It, it definitely is viable and it works Five, very, very three. well. But a lot of teams kind of forget it. Yeah. I, I mean, I expect to see it Attackers used more. This is another great site to use it on because very often you will get hookah control of above in order to make the attack either, you know, use a buck or a sledge a lot of times to open up the floor. We saw that when uh, we had reciprocity attacking. So I imagine we might see that from Redeemer if it's not down to thinking they just bucking up the floor. Then he might go for a similar strategy. There is also hatches, though, he could throw them down. So it doesn't necessarily have to go that route. But it is a nice way to make sure you get some behind the bar, for example. A bomb has been located. Well, Thinking Ian will go all the way up, set up his drone for some droning early on, of course, safely on the roof, which is currently not on fire. Shall uh, we'll continue to drone? And there's a lot of references in our broadcast. To be, uh, there's layers, this is the way I like to think. Yeah, it's like an onion, you peel it away. It's like an fire. ogre. It's like what? An ogre? I'd like to understand that. Drop the bomb to Watch real. Get out of my swamp. There, there you go. go. Box yeah. will get one kill on Chala. It'll get the second. The thinking aid. Exactly what they require. Bosco will find uh, the Claymore on Laxing and Rampy again. Foxy will get cleared up. And just as it started, it suddenly turns into an equilibrium again. 3v3 with the well, one anchor and two off-site players. The two roamers, the two lurkers, if you will, uh, from Reciprocity. Playing around them. Now, Space Station still has a uh, Thatcher available, which would be pretty nice to deal with the Jaeger ADSs. But also, having Redeemer will, will definitely add to their advantage. Now, I'm not sure if Redeemer, there you go, he has no more Candelas. Oh. Well, either way, though, I mean, it's not like they went to bad use. Definitely helped them get a lot of map control. Okay. It is, it is surprising to see Rampy still trying to go for Reload. these kills upstairs, though. I mean, it's nice that he's cutting off the rotations, and he's very on with his shots right now, so he's likely to catch people, potentially, but he's definitely someone that could help with the execute, but there's still a minute left, so he's got plenty of time to rotate once the rest of his teammates have the control they need as he continues to cut off those rotates. But it's still, there will come a time when he needs to really start to get going for that rotate, or else uh, this 3v3 will work out more so in favor of the defenders. Ooh, well, that's not going to help with the plant. Yeah, you obviously cannot plant unless you take out the uh, Gumant off your foot. And Bosco should go for the plant here. No, he goes shot from the back. Retro from above. He'll find the kill. 3v2. Still advantage for Reciprocity as Redeemer will take some fire from the bar. Rampy moving into blue. Attackers recovered the bomb. He's in there, but he'll lose his teammate. Mark will find the kill on the Jaeger. And a quick rush from Rampy. Take one. Still two alive. Retro and Mark the Shark. 15 seconds left on the clock as he'll find one on the Jaeger. The last one alive is still upstairs. Retro. He has no more impact grenades to use to his advantage. This should be a plant here as there's not enough time to come in and contest. He'll go maybe drop through the hatch. Is Rampy watching it though? He'll set himself by the side of the bar. Definitely doable here for Space Station. Rampy's on half health. Retro will drop. We'll give the information to Rampy who'll watch. Rotation in from the courtyard. There's the hallway and the blue bar itself. And does the ash know? 
just watching the hole, the rotation hole, as fire will be sprayed in from Retro. He's still in Sunrise Bar. He'll peek in as the castle will lose the fight and Rampy again. He'll clutch it every single time. What an absolute monster. He is such a beast. Unfortunately, baits like that just don't work very often. If you take shots like that, you're very often going to rotate to the other side. And you need to start to get to some serious layers of mind games to be able to get away with that. He just, I mean, you saw the instantly he shoots that way. Okay, gee, I wonder if he's going to come around from the other side thinking he tricked me. It's unfortunate, but Rat bro. especially when Rampy's is on point as he's been. Oh, man. This and that puts it at match point, too, speaking of point. Is he on, like, 18 kills right now? I think he's on match point against them. <laughs> it's, this is just ah. nuts. I got to say, though, one thing I think they really could be doing different on Reciprocity is, is bringing a Maestro. So, I mean, not only just because uh, the evil eyes are very good and they're just, they're seriously lacking in intel a lot of the times, despite, you know, the pulse being played, but also just that I gun is such a beast, his ability to take some damage. Show well. me what you got. 20 kills to four wow. down. Yeah. He's got, he's got more kills than his entire team combined. And he's got, he's, at some point he might just get to more kills than uh, everyone combined, but I think the, the, the game will obviously end before that point. My a, God, Rampy. Leave something for the others. He's definitely, yeah. I mean, if he dies early this round, then there's a possible comeback. If he does not, if he lives to the end of the round, like last round, you see exactly what happens. It's just, there's not a lot you could do to such a beast like that at this point. How do you stop a machine like that when you have Redeemer on point with the openings and the candelas, which, mean, which meant in the previous round, as you highlighted, Devin, it's very easy for Space Station to then find the two extra kills that they required to tie it up 3-3. Three three. And then, personal skill and information. I'm not sure if there were any drones set up to help out Rampy in that situation, but situation. But again, this this harks back to a question that, that I saw surface a couple days ago, where it's like, what's more important? Is it your, you know, your, your aim? Is it... Um, is it more your aim? Is it more your awareness? Is it more the communication? And I have to say, map awareness and map knowledge yeah. is definitely on top of that. I think, list. Uh, I mean, essentially, aim is more of a minimum standard. Yeah, you like you have, everybody have has that good everything aim. else builds on top of it. Like Gio was just saying in his video release today, you know that that everyone has the top level of aim at this point, pretty much, and it is down to intelligence above that. And I think you're asking, you know, what was helping? Was it drones, things like that? Sound also plays such a huge part in situations where it's down to like one v two. You're you're really going to be playing off of sound. You're going to be crouch walking a lot of places. You're going to be looking for opportunities to snap on anyone you hear and be looking in the right direction at the right time, as we saw at the end there. But he is, again, playing the similar role, maybe hoping to catch Fox again. As, uh, this is He's playing a dangerous game, being a little predictable. You see the drone right there. They're actually oh. a little bit in his way. A live ping coming out, trying to help him. Fortunately, it does not lead to any kills just yet. They're just wanting to deny, but no. Nope. Retro can give himself, sacrifice himself to the god of Rampy. 21 kills. The god, uh, you know. Chaos Gods are demanding blood. The Blood God is definitely getting his fill for the night. EMP is going to get thrown in here as Thinking Nade will try to contest Laxing inside, but not sure about that decision. Not so much of a Thinking Nade in that one. Well, we have seen Laxing go off to similar levels of what we're seeing for Rampy, so still some possibility he could do his thing, but just judging by the two different operators that are using Rampy, has a little bit of a slight advantage, but three Candelas still available for Redeemer as well to try and help gain some more map space, but... Only minute left. Rampy again, still on the roof, finally going to rotate down. So this is like they're getting set up towards the executed sub point here, but Redeemer could go again to blind everyone on site. That's not going to necessarily blind the heartbeat sensor. Well, add to your point the fact that, uh, you know, the buck being lost here is definitely a great loss for the attacking side. As of course, it would be great to have someone to destroy the floorboards, just now you'll have to re rely on your beaching rounds. Um, in this case, there's no Zofia. There's no such operator with reaching charges, for example, to use. And all Candelas will get thrown in. Is this the cue for Redeemer to move in? Yes, but he takes so much damage. He vaults over into the bar, and there's nobody behind it. The flash comes in, and it'll flash both operators coming in from the defense. This guy's that will connect one. Redeemer will go down. That's now the fuser being denied. Mark will finish it off. And he's that Chala cannot do much of the rest of this round. Ten seconds left on the clock as Rambi and Bosco will have to connect here if they want, if SSG wants to finish it off right. Oh no, not into your teammate. Sprayed right into the back of Laxing. We'll find one and two as Bosco and Rampy will go down. And that is what reciprocity required in that round so dearly. Well, like I said, if someone was going to shut down Rampy, 
Laxing's the one to do it. So, but that is close. That is close. I mean, as you said in the last matchup, this means now the best reciprocity you could hope for is the first tie of the season. 100%. We'll see, though. They're going to go back to Penthouse, the known death trap for this match. So that is a uh, risky thing to do, but guess what? Uh, nothing's really worked all that well for them other than Bar now. And they don't want to go to Kitchen, so... Penthouse Theater. they got to make their choices. At least they've uh, only lost this once where they've lost Kitchen twice, so I guess this is the lesser of two evils. Laxing going to tease one operator and choose a, a different one instead of one that uh, denies drones. He's going to be one that uh, denies drones. All right, we'll see if things actually do work out for us, Prosted here. It, both both are two games here. I, I want to say completely expected, actually, are super tight between all the teams that are in them. And I hope our matches continue in a similar way, similar fashion for the night as this um, is yeah. pretty exciting, I have to say. As, as some people here would say, that it has been a bit of a barn burner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess. I guess. Barn burners uh, have a bit more drama. It's like the fuel to light it all on fire, right? Ten seconds remaining. There's no drama. And eight. Oh, <laughs> shots fired. Seconds left before insertion. Well. We'll see how Penthouse does. Attackers I think this is pretty defeated. dramatic. Attackers going to a uh, bomb site that's just not been working ah. for anyone for your final chance. Odd that there's no Mira. I, I, I understand the, the mentality of it, obviously. Uh, you know, you're playing with a pulse, you're playing with a mute, you want to play with C-Force from below. But if Space Station are smart here, what they're going to do is try to clear things in from below, which is probably what they're setting up to do here. I mean, going in through the kitchen, going in through the bars, makes sense. In some ways, the bulletproof camera helps a little bit like a mirror, but it doesn't offer you the ability to line up your shots quite the same. Was there a bulletproof camera being brought in? I, d I don't know, but there is a uh, dock. Nope. nope. Well, barbed wire then. Bomb has been located. Well, no. both the mute and the dock are not bringing it. They're going with a uh, interesting strategy for this day. So they're this is old school. This is very old school. They're relying on the pulse in this situation. We'll see if Fox can do it. He's been he's been often Attackers playing very far from the site early on to try and stay alive because they're often going to get map control below the site itself and not too not worry too much about the rest. Plus he's got Laxing also watching his kitchen. But will be enough. But Laxing's also going to have the extra C4, so this could be something that Fox can call it for, ping it, have Laxing hit to be a thing. But that's assuming Laxing survives. Looks like Thinking Nade's actually going to pull off and not push him too hard. It's oh. just trying to use the drone hole, but he does see the reinforced wall. That's going to be a tip off. If he only knew. So, so ping coming out from Rampy as well. Sir, I, I wish there was a drone here to give him some information. Yeah. Well, let's see how patient he is in this attack. Should be spotted by the pulse. I mean, it would make sense that you not push inside of the stock. Oh, laxing spots, but the patience. That's so important. Knowing when to open fire. Putting the, uh, the relaxing into laxing here. <laughs> just just chilling. Rancho relaxo. Yeah, he's he's waiting for that opportunity. Oh, he gives it to him. Laxing perfect pounce here. He'll get one kill. He'll have to use his C4 actually to destroy the Claymore and go for a run out. And I don't know if that's really a smart use of utility, especially since there was a pulse near him and the candelas are being thrown in. Redeemer taking in a bit too much of the smoke and it might actually get dropped because of it. Um, He's got a job to do. Are they gonna go and plant right here right now? Oh no, they stack on top of one another and Fox will get the kill. Easy one on Chala. This is looking like the first tie of the season. Laxing yet again will find it. Rampy will get one spot, but he cannot land the shots. As Retro is very low on health. 27 seconds left on the clock. 1v5 and Rampy. He can get those 26 kills on the board if he liked to, but the shotgun staring right at him from the entryway. 15, 15 seconds, seconds left on the clock. Go. Three seconds for every kill. Is that even possible? Well, he'll find one on Retro. He'll try to find the second, and no! Mark the Shark is ready, and he'll bite. And that is all she wrote. Ladies and gentlemen, GG will play the first ever time in Season 9. There you go. Reciprocity versus Space Station Gaming 6-6, six to six, which unfortunately means we don't get an interview. I really thought if anyone was going to pull off the ace clutch. Two. Even the compliment from Laxing. Yeah, You're when, a god, Rampy. When Laxing says that, it, it's a huge compliment. This is no, this is no slouch of a person and no slouch of a personality in the scene. 
So, yeah. Can, there's certain players that get Ash banned against them. I'm thinking Rampy gets added to that list. 